So it keeps uh, unfolding. I say unfold instead of withhold. I would not rather be doing anything than this right here, right now. It's a mess. This is the spice of life. Being surrounded by people that I love and that I respect and that I cherish. I know, right? Normally they're so high strung. So I was born in Germany. Didn't stay there for very long. Raised by my mother and grandmother, which I believe had a lot of impact on who I am as a woman. I was an only child. And my mother and grandmother always loved and supported me. Never told me I couldn't be whatever I dreamed. And I dreamed big. I was the first person in my family to ever go to college. And I think I was third grade when teacher was going around the classroom asking all the little boys and girls what they wanted to be. A lot of the little girls wanted to be teachers or librarians. I wanted to be an attorney. Not even a lawyer, an attorney. Where did I get that idea? I wasn't watching Perry Mason. I liked to be outside as a kid. I still to this day couldn't tell you where it came from, but I knew in my heart of hearts that that's what I was going to do with my life. I didn't know I was going to own a brewery. We're in um, Ramona, California. This is the Starby Buffalo Ranch and Hop Farm. And so explain to me the organic, sustainable aspects of your farm here at Starby. Okay, so this is our, our hop field right here, and we don't use any Roundup or any chemicals. We, we do it as um, sustainably and natural as possible. We believe that we would like to have our products be natural and as organic as possible to have the finished product be as healthy as possible. In other words, not in my beer, right? <laughs> right, like, right. Make it as good as possible when it comes to... Uh, putting it into the, the beer that we make in San Diego. Correct. Yeah. One thing I think is really cool is that you guys are growing your own barley, and that's what these guys are macking on right now. Yeah. And that's, like, that's incredible. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. We, um, it's, it's called fodder. It's a uh, reside in Australia, where it's obviously drought all the time. And so um, you put in a couple pounds of grain in this self-sustained unit. It's temperature controlled, um, water controlled, it's all computerized. And um, it grows six days from seed to what you see here we're feeding. Uh, and it goes from two pounds of grain to about 12 or 15 pounds of food. So that's just on constant rotation, like you're yeah. always, always sprouting, always. Every day, yeah. Always something yep. beautiful. So yeah, and then they just, they just back it down. They don't, they get a lot of their, these kind of animals are supposed to get a lot of their, their moisture intake from their food they eat. And if obviously they're eating dry alfalfa, they're not getting any moisture from that. Oh. So this helps with that. And so how many buffalo in the herd? There's 36. Okay, and how long has the farm been in your family? My parents moved here in 1979. Thank you for also supplying the buffalo, the bison that we're going to have at the beer dinner. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. You don't say. Look at the side. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. We were nibbling on it a little bit earlier, and it was. Oh yeah, it's pretty tasty. Yeah, it tastes. It's edible for us. We're gonna do a topping with this. Is gonna happen. Yeah, you can eat it for sure. Yeah, but really good. They don't waste any of it. Uh, we make 42 of those, uh, they're called biscuits each day. They get excited oh, yeah. when they hear the trucks come around. Uh -huh. You saw ear, you know, ears they're, and, they're and either single horn or double horns yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feet work up and uh, they're ready for it. So there's a lot of different hops grown here. There's a group of hops called the Sea Hops, Cascade, Centennial, Columbus. There's a lot of those hops grown here. Uh, Cascade and uh, Columbus in particular. Uh, seem to do really well down here. We're at a much different latitude than Yakima where most of the hops are grown. Star B here is at a much different elevation. We're almost 3,000 feet here. So different hops are growing, you know, in different places. But Cascade and Nugget are two of the main hops here on the ranch. And then uh, this front field right behind us, uh, which was new just a couple years ago, uh, there's some Southern Hemisphere hops from South Africa, New Zealand here, some hops that were designed to grow in Japan, uh, Kirin 2, kind of experimenting with some hops that were not traditionally bred to grow in Yakima. So given our different climate, uh, our different level of chill hours, uh, our different elevation up here, and you know, there's so many microclimates within San Diego County, it makes it kind of a unique place to grow hops. So out of this field last year, we brewed uh, with the Southern Brewer, 
which was uh, from South Africa, Alfa Roma and Southern Cross, which are were uh, grown in New Zealand. It, it does give us a lot of uh, creative uh, license. Yeah, and then going out to Starby Bison and Hops Farm, Amy and her team, which do this amazing thing where they work as tirelessly and with intention and consciousness to do organic, sustainable ranch that has been in her family for so many years and didn't start out that way, but now she is using all of her efforts to, you know, grow the bison and keep the land in a way that she understands what she feeds the animal helps the animal to have a good quality yeah, of life. And then when that animal in turn goes into our bodies, how that translates into how we feel, the quality of life that we have, the energy that we then put out into the universe. It's a really beautiful thing. And then we're going to work with Amy and, and Starby to do hops um, and beers right in the future. And I think that'll be really important. We've got to support her farm. And then they make amazing hops. And we get to have that come into our beer. The same sort of love and, a, and attention that goes into what she does in that farm will then show and shine through in our award-winning craft beer here at Second Chance Beer Company. I think a lot of younger drinkers uh, experiencing beer are enjoying these um, more intense flavors, so more uh, more intense uh, uh, sweet flavors, sometimes from sugar, sometimes from uh, infusions of co coffee or coconut or uh, uh, fruit, uh, you know, passion fruit and things like that are becoming super popular. Um, but at the same time, I think holding true to uh, traditional styles like English English style brown ales, you know, well made can be you know, one of the best beers I've, uh, I've ever had. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we try to we try to balance both the the traditional forms of, of brewing with uh, new and, and exciting infusions and experiments. And you know, lately I've even been playing around with uh, things like uh, rosemary in beer and bas sweet, you know, Thai basil or sweet basil in beer. It's important for me as not only someone in the San Diego community but as a young girl who was raised on welfare and spent a lot of my uh, childhood standing in lines waiting for food, being food insecure. Well, one of the things that people don't realize is that food insecurity has nothing to do with there not being enough food. Not knowing where our next home would be, um, what we might have to encounter when we got there, and what the house would look like. But my mom and grandma always cleaned it up and it was immaculate. In the past, that produce was going to the landfill. But we, we would not oftentimes have Thanksgiving meals if it weren't for organizations like the San Diego Food Bank. So to go in there and be able to highlight the amazing work that they are doing to feed, I think it's 48,000 San Diegans every day, is truly... 11 cents a pound. That's right. awesome. That's, that's a great opportunity. It's ineffable. It, it, and there's no words. Just stop going to the landfill because it was cheaper for farmers to, to basically take the landfill or not pick it or leave it in the field uh, for fertilizer as opposed to box it up and get it to a food bank. But California, a little more cutting edge. One of the things that makes us one of the leading food banks in the United States is that we've really evolved away from being a food bank. We're really a nutrition bank because we know that nutrition related disease is linked to poverty. This is a dynamic program that actually last year resulted in 175 million pounds of fresh produce being oh distributed to people in need in the state of California that otherwise would have gone to the landfill. Wow. And so tell us a bit more too about the populations that you serve here in San Diego. Well, a lot of people also think that food banks are primarily serving the homeless. While we do serve the homeless, it's less than 5% of our service population. It's the uh, seniors on a fixed income, the working poor, children um, living in poverty, and probably most surprising, active duty military and their families. Uh -huh. This ugly produce gets a second chance to feed your food insecure and then 
you're doing an even more creative uh, third chance, if you will, with the rest of that waste. Well, we really found out that if we were more environmentally conscious, we could actually save a lot more money, which means we're going to be able to feed a lot more people. And so we were putting about 600,000 pounds a year of refuse in the landfill, but now on site, we have on site composting and recycling, and we're able to take food product and turn it into compost in five days. And the first food bank in the United States to achieve this. Amazing. Boom. So tell me what you do with the compost. Do you sell it? No, actually, you know what? We've got about 500 nonprofit agencies, 500 partners, and many of them have community gardens. So it's kind of a cool story. We take food product, we turn it to compost, we give it to our nonprofit partners. We're moving to becoming a zero waste facility. We're not there yet, but we're getting pretty close. That's incredible. Right now, we're doing about 100 cubic yards of compost a month. Yeah. You were saying how many? You said a ton of solar panels on the on we the have, roof already. We have well, yeah, 1,400 solar panels in the roof. Yeah. We've got, that saves us $120,000 a year. We've got phase change material in the freezer, so that holds in the cold, which allows us to turn the compressors off at night. And then all the other different environmental stuff we've done. Uh, as I mentioned, we've achieved the LEED Gold version 4 award, and I'm told we're the first food warehouse in the world to achieve that. In the world. We're checking out the composter. I understand you guys are the first to, to have one of these. First, food, how it works. first food bank in the United States, so two pieces of machinery. The first one over there, that's a turbo separator wet loads and dry loads. Wet loads more interesting. Uh, literally can product, cans are sealed, food is in the can, the machine crushes the can, squeezes the food out, the food goes this way into one of these big uh, bins. Uh, that metal ball, or that metal can is now a metal ball, which we're going to recycle that for money. Perfect. We take that uh, food product, we mix it with wood shavings, and it goes into this vessel. This is the digester. This drum will rotate, will heat the product, kill the pathogens, and we make finished compost Awesome. And it's been great rolling through here with you. Really appreciate the education and Thank you. all the amazing information and, and work you guys are doing here. Uh, I think we've got some great inspiration for what we're going to do for the dinner on Sunday. Uh, I mean, all these things, these great things that are in season that you guys get to get to uh, pass along to families that really need. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're going we're gonna to feed ourselves with some awesome uh, local produce and uh, Really drew some great inspiration. Well, it was my pleasure, and I, I, I thank you for the opportunity to tell people about our good work. So, yeah. good luck to you on your dinner on Sunday. Yeah, thank appreciate you. you. Absolutely. All right, cheers, Jim. Cheers. Second chance can be a moment in time, it can be the next day, a rare opportunity, but whatever it is, you seize it and you make the most of it. And then we also make that a mission in our business practices. So, we have uh, sustainable business um, practices here with decor. Yes. In our tasting rooms, furnishings, about 70% of everything you see in here is living its second chance. You get a lot of your stuff recycled, right? Absolutely. Upcycled, um, consignment shops, mm -hmm. but all that makes it very cozy and welcoming. It does. All right. We're here at Specialty Produce, uh, one of my favorite places to shop here in San Diego. These guys do a fantastic job of... Uh, creating relationships with local farms and uh, over 60 farms throughout California bringing in uh, beautiful seasonal ingredients and bringing them to local chefs and now to anyone who wants to walk through the door it's open to the public and you can shop where the chef shop which is awesome uh, we're going to walk through the farmers market cooler and show you some of the things that are coming in locally and we're going to take advantage of some of those local finds and then you have this amazing asset in our community specialty produce they service all of our, our restaurants throughout all of san diego county but they have this really amazing program where they buy from all of our local farmers and they highlight that and have that produce available in an area so that amazing chefs like Tyson can go there 
and support those local farmers and buy that organic, locally grown, sustainable, farm to table food and use all of that to then make our dinner. And right now I'm drinking your gold winner two years in a row. Yeah, we don't like to brag, but since you brought it up. I know. <laughs> That's what I said, yeah. It's better than regular onions. <laughs> Leaks the best rock. That's amazing. Oh, I claim this one. <laughs> Get on this one. Or you can watch the one that's good for later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is an inside dish, though. It's like encapsulated, so it's crunchy, like it oh, looks wow. like caviar. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But really bright tart. Yeah. We were going to put them on the top. I didn't know they were coming for the second part. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, how are you? Say again. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Feeling old. Oh, there's that. Oh, that came out. Yeah. One bite. Any that spoon? Watch. This is what I want you to do. Ready? Not on the plate like that. Just a little bit on each of the pieces of the moose. So Joe's going to tell us a little bit about what's in season right now and what we're going to take advantage of. Yeah. So it's winter. We're in the midst of uh, citrus season. Uh, we have a lot of citrus here going on the wall. We have, uh, we're going to try some stuff. Some car car orange. Um, so good. Yeah. It's a pink navel. But it's good, I'll let you guys try it first. Got a little wedge out here. You guys like oranges? Yeah. Um, that. Check that come out. Come on! Super, real. super, super cool. These are just like, really gonna be delicious. Take these too. They're like pop, they're like, yeah, pop they're like, they're like little, they call them like lime caviar. Yeah, a little yeah. block. Pop rocks? Pop rocks. Real bright. Nature's pop rocks. That's like a earthy character too on top of all yeah. the citrus. Yeah. Remember what the car again? These are called finger lines. Finger lines, yeah. These are grown up in no these stuff also. Uh, so lines. you see those little uh, kind of that encapsulated could... bits that come out. Um, they look like, it looks like lime caviar. Right. It looks like pot. Yeah, sure. And then they pop and crunch. Like a little tiny rock. Pop and crunch, a little sour component. Mm -hmm. So we can put that, if we're going to grill up and char all these great root vegetables for our, our tacos, this would be a really nice accompaniment to kind of offset that sweetness that we're going to get from grilled carrot and grilled from sweet potato. So yeah, talking about all these uh, wonderful winter root vegetables that Tyson's picking out. Uh, yeah. Makes us think of uh, some of our maltier beers, like uh, Irish Red, or uh, our Mulligan Irish Red, or our Tabula Rasa Porter. Um, just pair up so well with those uh, uh, roasted root vegetables, the winter vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna take. Um, we're gonna start with over the line, the lager, uh, which is this awesome, bright, clean, crisp, refreshing kind of great start to uh, to the dinner and um, taking some uh, Korean daikon radish, shaved real thin and circular, kind of like a, a taco shell that's been fermented, fermenting right now. Um, we're gonna use that as a taco shell and uh, char off a bunch of root vegetables that, we've, that, we, that we grabbed today. Top a little bit of the, of the cabbage blossoms. Maybe grab some of those finger limes. I think that's just a nice, bright, kind of bright way to start. You get a lot of sweetness. You get some acidity from uh, uh, the fermented radish and washing it down with a, a light crisp lager. I think it's going to be a nice way to start. That's a good way to start. Yeah. And then one of Curtis's favorite dishes from the, the dinners was the monkfish liver mousse. Oh, yeah. Curried monkfish liver mousse with a little chicken skin chip. Yeah. Some coconut, some um, mustard seed caviar, and, and that and tabula rasa. Yeah. I think it's round two. They get this just deep, rich, red, decadent, dark deliciousness, uh, and it's just like it, it's like no other meat. 
and it's going to be absolutely delicious. We are going to give it a little bit of seasoning with kind of a chorizo blend that we've come up with. Uh, a little little uh, chili and a little bit of cumin, uh, garlic, of course. We are going to bring some cinnamon into this to play off of the beer that we're going to be pairing this with. Uh, second chance to this great uh, barrel-aged beer uh, with uh, s'mores, s'mores in mind. So a little vanilla, bourbon, of course, and then that kind of graham cracker character uh, that tends to have a little bit of cinnamon and ginger, those kind of flavors. So we're playing off of that a little bit with the rub. This is how we eat right here. Hold it means right that here. we work with other local chefs, such as Tyson, right. when we do right, we projects like this. Because he's an amazing chef, but he's also like family. And to give him the opportunity to shine and show his craft and his art and how he works so well with us as part of our family, we have our, our uh, steaks prepped and ready to go. We have a little bit of fennel. We're going to add a little butter, that compound butter I was talking about that has the chorizo flavors, a little bit of cinnamon. We're putting some uh, caramelized onion, a little bit of garlic in there as well. And then we're going to take that bag and we're going to seal it up and getting, getting, it, getting, it, get, getting it going here. So what we do is we kind of seal the bag most of the way, leave a little pocket, and then we're going to submerge that let, and this happens the best way in hot water. And you're pushing all the air out with the pressure of the water, right? You see that? With the pressure of the water. And then we are gonna pull that closed all the way. So now it's not gonna float. It'll stay submerged in the water. And it's gonna cook there about two hours, hour and a half, two hours. Submerge, the water is a perfect 125 degrees, which will make it medium rare. And uh, you see that little bit of fennel. So one thing that we do sometimes, you'll see when you put things like stem in a bag in sous vide, it will start to release some, some O2, so you'll see the bag start to float, so you'll go in there one more time, once the water kind of heats that up, and you'll push it down one more time just to push out that last bit of air that that, was, that created, and now we got it good, good to go, submerged all set. So in about an hour and a half, we're going to pull these things out. Beautiful bison, red, rich, and delicious. These are about ready to come off right now. All we're doing right here is just giving them a little bit of caramelization on the outside, letting some of that fat caramelize, crystallize. We're gonna get, we're gonna get some goodness going here. I believe that this might be a little ethereal, but life, all of this is one. We are all one. Nature is one unity right there is no duality there is no separation so what we do affects the whole so to understand that our actions have ripple effects get at it if you want first curse is served first curse is served weaver bag it up boo bag it up bag it up budget was so tiny but you had to feed 1500 people I did I fed 1500 people for 100 bucks yeah like 10 cents a piece and it's healthy that's the other thing too right exactly and it won it won the I won the I won a belt I won first place you didn't even have to wrestle anybody no I know these two take some of yours. It's not wine. I almost forgot. Always acidity. Always a little bit of acidity with uh, with uh, with tacos, right? Got to have a little something. I'll just taste it. I taste it first. So you can grab a lime, squeeze it if you like. Bo, you like lime, right? A little bit of lime on top. I want you can. And then pick it up like a taco. Yeah, buddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now it's mm. I almost forgot. <laughs> Back it up with a beer. Heck yeah. This is the pairing right here. Yeah. First pairing of the night. Over the line lager. 
from Second Chance. Loggers and tacos. Can you go wrong? No. Us giving back to organizations that are you know, rescuing dogs from kill situations. All of that is doing a little part to make a difference in the lives of animals, in the lives of people. And it not only makes me feel good, but it of course has positive impacts on our business. And we don't have that high turnover that a lot of other places do because people want to stay here. Yeah. All right, so we're doing a pairing here, which uh, I think it is Curtis uh, Haw's favorite uh, pairing from Second Chance uh, that we've done it at a dinner here in the past uh, with Tabula Rasa, which is Second Chance's robust porter. That they've taken a uh, gold medal two years in a row at Great American Beer Festival, which I should probably have one of these, which uh, is, is incredible and fantastic uh, to uh, the largest national beer competition uh, in the United States. Uh, the most entered. Pairing that with, yeah, we're pairing that with a, a monkfish liver mousse. Man, I'm really excited just to take this bite. We have a chicken skin chip here. I'm gonna go ahead and start picking it up a little bit. Chicken, chicken skin chip that's picking up some monkfish liver mousse. We have a little bit of mustard caviar that's been brought down with some of Second Chance's Seize the Day. A little agave. We have some coconut chip that's been sweetened to touch and crisped up. And this bite is not gonna last long. I love Kevin. that you know ingredients that I've never even heard of. Good, try this. <laughs> yeah, I got this. Yeah, if you want a plate, maybe a napkin. Mm. Okay. Just ask I love edible flowers. Uh, Joe is uh, Joe is his name, right? Yeah. Yeah, Joe is super mm. proud. He was Informed cutting his, stuff oh, open man. and the, he knows, taste, he knows taste every that. farm. He knows the history of all the vegetables, all the fruit. I love that. Far from it. Like cool. those teachable moments to anybody who walks in that yeah. has that has that opportunity. Oh, wow. It's a beer chop. Uh, mm. That was good. Crazy oh. healthy too. Oh, I know. Oh my god. Yeah, it's, and it's vegan. So basically, we're starting with a vegan dish. Nice. Say, say, the salad. Seize the salad. I don't. I don't even know where to, where to end the conversation of how it begins or where it ends because it's all always together and interconnected. <laughs>